The footage that you're looking at here is an altar fight from this morning where our allies decided to fight us after ultimately deciding to betray. Now, look, usually I don't cover drama on the channel. Okay. You can go back. You can look at all my videos and in all my KVKs, you know, sometimes I talk about KVKs and how they went, the end result, things like that. But you'll notice that I basically never talk about drama, but being betrayed in this KVK was so ridiculous. It was such a, it was such silly goo behavior that I just I couldn't uh, believe it like after I saw all the screenshots I was like oh my god this is actually ridiculous I have to make a video about this and as you can see by the length of this video we're gonna get into literally everything so get comfortable grab your popcorn get a drink and we're gonna jump right into it but first what's going on guys cheers okay first I have to set the stage for who are the allies in this kvk this is the storm of stratagems kvk that we started in just a couple of weeks ago and I'm in kingdom 1568 we are the a seed in the greenwood camp down at the center here and our allies or what was our allies are all in the green check marks okay so we have 2790 as our camp mates and we're also allied with daybreak over here and let me move my head you'll see the a seed of daybreak is 2102 and they have 2425 and finally we're allied with wind off in the top right corner they have 1979 and 2440 one now the enemies in this kvk are earth right in the center here 1500 i think is their a seed although you could see their stats are pretty similar and if you guys don't know what you're looking at here okay the first column is the power of the kingdom and the second column is the kill points for the kingdom okay and that's going to be important they also allied with water in the bottom right corner who has 2133 which if you guys didn't know is an imperium kingdom okay so in this kvk we're going up against an imperium you can see that we are literally right next to each other and that was our zone one okay so we have earth and water allied with fire camp up in the top left corner now what you'll notice here is that the a seed for fire is tbd and that is because after kvk registration was set in stone the a seed of fire camp decided to migrate out so that kind of screwed everything up and it made it really hard to make fair allies going into this kvk but we kind of tried to do the best that we could obviously fire having a 77 billion kill point kingdom that's only 19 billion more than Ahmad Aziz has by himself okay this single player has 19 billion fewer kill points than an entire kingdom okay so we knew going into this kvk with the a seed from fire migrating out that the fire camp was basically going to be useless okay and it's important to know that we knew that going into this kvk that's why we didn't even bother putting the calculated stats on the official map when we sent this out to everybody in our kingdom so at the end of the day you know the a seed from fire camp kind of kind of screwed everybody over here all right so knowing that it was pretty much going to be a 2v3 we figured that the fairest thing to do would be to take earth camp who has the highest kill points as you can see here 1.084 trillion and we would take the highest power camp which is water down in the bottom here they have 38 billion total power and we pair them together with whatever is left over from fire right makes sense highest kill points highest power in theory those would be the most powerful opponents to handle a 3v2 now again this isn't perfectly fair right you can see that wind has fighters and greenwood has fighters and daybreak has fighters so it's not perfect but like if you're gonna pick two people to go up against everyone else you would think that it would be the strongest with the most kill points right so it's kind of the best that we could do but most importantly this was also suggested by the king of 2102 which is the a seed from daybreak this is an in-game screenshot of a discussion between one of our r5s and their king mardem it is what his name is and virtually at the same time they agreed that daybreak with wind and greenwood looks like a good ally configuration and they said 2102 which is them daybreak your camp greenwood in 1979 which is the a seed from wind camp you can see that in the top right corner here so it's not like we just decided on these allies all willy-nilly there was a lot of discussion and we both independently arrived at the same conclusion so it's like okay great we agree those are going to be the allies okay so let's jump into game here and we fast forward until the first pass opens and the plan here was that us in greenwood were going to push into this zone up against water and it was going to be 
a pretty good fight after all they do have an imperium kingdom so we knew the fighting was going to be good now for daybreak they kind of knew that they weren't really going to get a fight here right because before kvk even started the a seed from fire migrated out so they knew that they were going to go into the zone and they weren't really going to get any fighting done but as you saw they agreed to the allies anyway so we push into barbuda okay and there was like a good maybe two or three days of fighting up against the water camp this actually the passes opened on thanksgiving okay so the timing was crazy for us in america but there was a lot of fighting going on here okay and honestly water put up a decent fight i think we had a pretty slow and steady progression across the zone i don't remember if there were any moments where we were like super pushed back but it was still like two or three days worth of fighting and eventually we did push water back to their gate and we felt really good about that right like it was the first fight at kvk it was a pretty big fight and we performed really well of course daybreak pushes into their zone no problems there and then we come over to wind versus earth now this is important and we're going to come back to this later but earth pushes into ithaca and they fight up against wind for i would say one or two days eventually as you can see earth wins the zone now i don't want you to be confused here we have some alliances in wind are in purple and also some alliances in earth are in purple but what's important here is that earth fought wind for one or two days eventually they felt like wind gave up that was what they said they felt like wind gave up the zone we're going to come back to that later because that's a very important point but after a few days of fighting earth wins their zone okay so that puts kvk at one to one we won our zone and wind lost theirs so both sides won a zone everything's looking good and this is where we get back into the screenshots here we get a message from a player who goes by the name of love which is this individual right here currently they are in alliance 02 re and as you can see they are in kingdom 2102 which is the a seed from daybreak they're currently the queen of 2102 so they're a pretty important decision maker when it comes to the r4s of that kingdom so daybreak says hey everyone i would just like to throw this in the hat as a suggestion the moment greenwood camp that's us beat water camp this kvk has been thrown off balance more than it already was to begin with hypothetically speaking if we re-allied daybreak meaning them and greenwood meaning us versus earth which won their zone and wind which lost their zone wind would be able to have a safe zone five and zone seven in addition to better chance of entering kingsland if greenwood doesn't exert themselves too much in tiris we could have a really good 2v2 in kingsland so we get this message from daybreak asking to change the ally configuration that they proposed as well after we already fought a zone against an imperium kingdom and they got to sit around and do nothing and let me remind you that daybreak and greenwood have pretty much the same power and kill points so it's not like we overpower them it would theoretically be an even fight if we didn't already just fight for two or three days against an imperium and even if we agreed to this right why would we have to fight you for king's land after we had to fight an entire additional zone so naturally us and wind both decline here we have shadow queen and r4 from 1979 they basically say we shouldn't change allies in the middle of kvk why don't we all just win and you guys can register for your first kvk pop-up and here we have rk who is one of the r5s in my kingdom and he's basically agreeing with shadow queen he says i can agree with that i'm not a fan of changing allies either i've never been in a situation to do so and mind you rk since as long as i've known him and i've been playing with him since literally the start of the game like five years now okay he's basically always been in an r4 or king position since he started okay and we've never been in a situation where we change allies in mid kvk it makes no sense love says okay thanks for your opinions you can see the dates right here okay now remember the icon for rk here because we're about to take a look at a private dm and he wanted me to well he didn't want his actual name out there so i had to redact it but here you can see a private message between rk one of our our fives and mardem which if you remember earlier is the king of the daybreak a seed 2102 also the king of love the person that you just saw in this proposal right here and again i'm going to point you to the timeline here this was a little after 12 31 a.m and this private conversation happened at 2 a.m an hour and a half later where rk sends a screenshot from an in-game message which we're going to take a look at in a second and he says this is disgusting they meaning earth camp 
just wants a chance at winning and will do anything underhanded i don't think we change allies it's very sneaky of them mardem the king of daybreaks 2102 says yeah it's really trash keep allies it seems that they're making a 3v2 structure through our division rk agrees and this is the screenshot that rk sent their king it was a screenshot of a conversation between one of the leaders of wind camp and one of the leaders from earth camp in kingdom 1500. this was right before the first zone battle where wind camp ultimately lost and earth camp won wind said ready for pass four they said we're ready we will win they said thinking about it okay maybe maybe not then they said i don't really care about zone five battles i think we'll have a lot to talk about after the battle in zone five wind camp says about like wh what do we have to talk about and they said you are important to both camps you understand and they said I do this is obviously sweet talk and this is obviously an attempt at hinting at the possibility of allying after the past four battles in zone five and this screenshot is important this is evidence that the leadership of earth camp is going behind other people's backs to try to form alliances after kvk had already started does that sound familiar now another interesting thing was discussed during the conversation that happened between rk one of our r5s and the king of daybreak and that was just 20 minutes prior rk says but if 1500 speaks of 1568 poorly i dislike them even more now remember that is 1500 that is earth camp one of our enemies the king of daybreak says i'm the same korean but i'm getting to loathe them rk says earth camp and he says yes they still smear us in the community rk says oh wow and he says disgusting so here we can see that daybreak at this point our allies basically is suggesting that they have bad blood with the earth camp and that they're enemies this is important information for later so needless to say after all of the back and forth with the king of daybreak we decline their suggestion to rearrange the allies after we decline we get a follow-up from them they say hello everyone i hope you're doing well a discussion was carried out within our camp daybreak as you all know we are not in the best position in this kvk there is a high level of dissatisfaction within our kingdoms not only for the lack of war but also the fact that money has been spent we're going to talk about this in a second because that drives me crazy time was taken off work and also the anticipation you all know how boring it is in home kingdom true those are true statements as leaders you should very well know the demands of 100 plus players who dedicate time and money to this game you would do what you can to keep the morale up okay understandable sure you can tell us to suck it up and sign up for next kvk no skip but it's not as simple as that all the money and work that our players and leaders have put into this kvk will not be saved for the next one we were not given a chance at redeeming ourselves so please hear me out this is our proposal now keep in mind this is their second proposal one don't fight in Tyrus. let them have that zone for clarification Tyrus over here is this zone right here and remember that greenwood us have already taken this zone against water camp and we have an easy way to get into the next zone so we know that we're going to be able to get into Tyrus with no problem and obviously water camp can enter into Tyrus as well because this zone was given to them basically for free based on how this map is actually laid out in storm of stratagems so daybreak is asking us not to fight water camp in that zone and let them have it second all of us fight them together when pass eight is fully opened and finally after we clear them out we fight each other within Kingsland for the star again a recommendation that we fight them despite us already fighting an entire zone against an Imperium Kingdom and they've been sitting around doing nothing for months remember we have the same amount of power we have the same amount of kill points so any suggestion to fight them for the star is basically ridiculous we set a time and also a time limit for example 24 hours after the 24 hours is up we judge based on territory obviously this recommendation doesn't really go over that well either and when they say that all of us can fight them together when pass eight is fully opened they they're suggesting that wind camp which mind you has already lost this zone and they wouldn't be able to get into this zone if water takes it because remember water has an imperium kingdom so how exactly is wind supposed to get into king's land and help fight us back they suggested that they could come from one of the left zones but okay so they'd have to fight through the zones just to get 
to King's Land to then fight in King's Land. So obviously this is a pretty selfish proposal. Daybreak is saying screw over wind camp just so that way we get a chance to fight and then fight us for the star at the end of KVK. Like what bro? What now, before we get into our response, I just want to point out that the money that players spend on KVK for mountain warfare bundles for crystal technology, nobody is responsible for those purchases besides the person spending their money. Your alliance leadership is not responsible for you spending money on bundles. Your kingdom leadership is not responsible for you spending money on bundles and leadership in kingdoms and alliances should not feel bad if players spend their money on those bundles. Why? Because you are an adult and you decided to spend money on a mobile game. You did not have to spend that money. Nobody told you to spend that money. You need to take accountability for your own financial decisions. I mean, what are we talking about here? And just to be clear, I understand that players purchase mountain warfare for fighting because it gives you crystals, but you also get gems and you also get some amount of speed ups and resources. I know it's not a lot. And I know that's not why people buy these obviously, right? But to say that you get nothing out of buying mountain warfare, if you buy this out and you're sitting on a mountain of gems and say that you wasted your money, it's like, it's nobody's fault, but yours. If you spend your money on a KVK and then eventually there's no fighting, that's the risk that you take with your money as a grown up. Okay. The fact that I have to even say that is blows my mind. Okay. It blows my mind unless leadership gives up mid KVK, but there would be opportunity for these players to fight. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. So after we get this proposal here, okay, we have jungle warfare from 2790. That's our campmates here in Greenwood. And this is Mardem over here. Remember, this is the king of 2102 in daybreak jungle warfare says, why don't we speak to earth and arrange a one V one between earth and daybreak in the left zone. That would be this zone right here because obviously earth camp has free reign to get in here and daybreak has full reign to get in here as well the king from daybreak says earth camp doesn't fight us and here we have another one of our allies from our camp saying we won't know until we talk to them they want glory best way out that is a 1v1 jungle says why wouldn't they fight you and the king of daybreak says they said they'd run away when we came 2790 responds that if they win they get all the circles in that zone and they want that love says we're willing to take the brunt of the force when pass eight opens and jungle says hi love that's not what we're implying that you should do i'm with rk that's the r5 in my kingdom i've never fought allies before and i would like to avoid that at all costs also wind don't get circles which is also not great because remember they're going to be locked. I honestly think that if we approach earth for a one V one versus daybreak, they would do it that way. You get your fights that you need and deserve love doubles down and says they won't. That's why we're here talking about this. Mardem backs them up and says 100%. They never come to us. And RK says, even if we try to arrange it, like tell them that Greenwood won't interfere. Okay. And this is important because obviously based on the map layout here, we have access to these zones here. Okay. And we can push into this zone to help daybreak up against earth. It would basically be a two V one in that zone. What we're proposing is that we'll tell earth that we literally will not help you because you want to fight so badly. Anyway, 1979 from wind camp says, it seems essentially they want a 2v2 rk follows up saying whoever wins either earth or daybreak gets all the circles there in 1979 is saying that it seems like daybreak just wants a 2v2 and it would just be burning pointless flags and forts they double down here and say it would be a friendly match yeah a friendly match with wind locked in the corner and us already having fought an imperium for two to three days the discussion continues this is our ally in greenwood they say if earth doesn't accept a 1v1 they will be humiliated on the message boards now we're going to get to message boards in a second because that's that's a whole other thing okay they kind of have to accept the 1v1 they did it to themselves by being so loud king of daybreak says they don't think about that and 1979 says pass eight doesn't lead us to king's land only z5 and pass seven and nine open at the same time and this is what i said earlier if we don't fight for this zone then wind is locked in their zones and they're not even going to get the chance to break out until King's Land opens. So how are they going to help us fight in King's Land when they got to push through zones and we're already here? It's massively unfair for wind camp. Obviously the king of 2102 in daybreak says they hate us very much. The most infatuated way for us to fight is to be two with you guys and run away to fourth zone. RK from our kingdom says, do you mind if I speak with their representative? Basically talking about earth camp, asking them for a one V one with daybreak. I have an old friend in earth leadership and he responds for them. Daybreak versus earth are the most meaningless wars. So as you can see between this screenshot and this screenshot, daybreak was completely dismissive of our counter 
counter proposal. They have a perfect opportunity to go up against a camp that has a combined higher kill count than them and they're not even listening to the idea and for what it's worth not only has 2790 in greenwood our camp said that they've never fought allies before but also 1979 from wind camp also says they've never fought their allies they said yeah we've had a situation like yours like daybreak two times already but we've never fought our allies love from daybreak says we're not forcing you into anything and 1979 is like okay but if we don't agree with you th then what's gonna happen and they're like well we can think about it but first we have to try and 1979 is like try try what like like everyone is against this proposal like if if everyone's against it then of course we're going to be forced into fighting our allies like that's what happens so we propose that they 1v1 earth camp they're completely dismissive of that idea saying that earth won't fight them and they don't even consider letting us set up a 1v1 and they'd rather go with a proposal that screws over wind camp and makes it much harder for greenwood to actually fight and then they want to fight us 1v1 in kingsland after all of that it's obviously unfair and it's unfair to two camps it's unfair to greenwood and it's unfair to wind so again it's a selfish proposal for daybreak to get some fighting in and screw over two other camps as a consequence for that so obviously everyone declines but you might be wondering well why are they so adamant that earth isn't going to fight them remember earlier when i said keep the message boards in mind well earth camp was already i mean they're basically crybabies okay they've been whining on the message boards saying that this kvk is unfair even though they agreed to the allies they post the screenshot and i think that it was originally in korean if i'm not mistaken so this is google translate but they said when matching was set up like this the faction tiers i saw were like this i wanted the one o'clock camp and the six o'clock o'clock camp as the enemy so the one o'clock camp is wind and the six o'clock camp is us in greenwood so okay so you got the enemies that you wanted the reason was that our camp has a small number of people on the map had to block multiple areas at the same time in fact if you have a one o'clock as a team not only will you start the seventh zone fight on the same line but you will not have to worry about the enemy coming through the eighth gate because the map is large and has many gateways the goal was to reduce the number of battle lines as much as possible also i judged that the six o'clock camp to be the strongest camp outside us and wanted to make them our enemies okay so you got what you wanted here they go on to say that basically the a seed of fire camp just didn't respond to them which we've already concluded that we knew going into this kvk that the a seed from fire camp was going to migrate here we have their conversation with the seven o'clock camp which is daybreak earth says if three teams team up their chance of winning is very high do you have any intention of changing it and daybreak says all the servers are satisfied we have no intention of changing the allies earth says i don't think the balance is good i know you won't be able to enjoy kvk much is that okay daybreak says 2133 is a second alliance server and can't ignore hordes and 1813 is also a persistent server so the balance will be roughly right now again this translation is not great but here they're saying that the allies are pretty much balanced here earth goes on to say that they tried to change things and ultimately it didn't happen then they go on to say that their strategy up against wind camp was very aggressive they went ahead and started building very deep into the territory they said as expecting the wind camp was quite strong and if we pushed hard during uptime we were pushed back a lot during downtime we were quite taken aback by our opponent's strength and even made a plan considering the worst case scenario so here you can see screenshots of how things were playing out however despite my thought the opponent acted as if he did not want to waste much money in this five point struggle and after holding contest for a while they withdrew when we saw that we were losing we decided we would win even if we had to grind everything down so we waited the next day but all opponents withdrew we didn't lose while forming a battle line we lost like a real dog well you didn't lose you literally won the zone so much so that i don't know why it's said to be well balanced accordingly we had questions about the seven zone battle and decided to quickly leave a kvk review with the question of whether to add this kvk i think i can spend the rest of the year comfortably so basically what they're saying is that they felt like wind camp withdrew from this zone and gave it to earth camp and earth camp is saying okay well the rest of kvk is going to be unfair then because we're going to have to do 2v1 daybreak and greenwood versus earth in this zone and they're they're basically they're whining that they they won the zone they even admitted that it was a really intense battle like how are you salty you won I don't under, I don't understand this at all so basically earth is whining on the message boards saying that kvk is unfair even though they won their zone and that they're just gonna basically sit here for the rest of the year which would be to the end of kvk and this is why daybreak 
thinks that earth isn't going to fight them because earth is basically just off in the corner crying even though they're winning and on top of that in the lost kingdom chat we have bender who's one of the r4s in 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 the earth camp he says look at the bright side for the altar you'll fight water camp which is an easy win here we see shogun respond yes and you yours bender responds saying 1979's a seed with more power ran away so here they're going with their narrative that wind ran from the fight and wind is just like ran away when did we run away like they lost the zone and then bender goes on to say water is dead weight you can't help people who don't want to help themselves this is bender he is often in r4 in the earth camp he's in kingdom 1778 and i'm pretty sure he used to be in kingdom 1568 a long time ago so we have a player here in earth camp of some prominence talking shit about water camp their allies in this kvk while the rest of their camp is on message boards whining and complaining that it's unfair that they won their zone and do you remember this in-game screenshot from the leaders of Earth Camp messaging Wind Camp trying to sweeten the deal and say hey maybe we should chat after the zone well this dream guy right here that's literally the alliance leader from vita in kingdom 1500 that's earth camp so earth is talking shit about allies in water camp they're going behind people's back to try and get wind to switch sides so that way they have an easier kvk and to top it all off bender from the earth camp messages our kingdom's leader and says water doesn't fight so they don't deserve anything and we said they did fight though we literally fought them for like two or three days earth camp responds saying would have been better us and you guys or daybreak and 1979 they made a typo here with either you guys or daybreak and we said they lasted longer than 1979. so earth camp is allied with water and says that they don't deserve any rewards and we're over here saying like look we fought water in this zone longer than you fought 1979 in this zone so clearly water is fighting in this kvk it's crazy to say that their allies don't deserve rewards after the fighting that we had in this zone so at this point daybreak is frustrated they've given us two proposals both of which are ridiculous because it negatively affects wind and greenwood for their own personal satisfaction so afterwards we get this message from love in daybreak they say this is not another proposal but a decision we have made as one camp we are not being manipulated by an enemy camp right got it as i've mentioned before this is the second kvk in a row that we've had a no show you can say oh well that's too bad but think about what this can do to a kingdom we are not going to sit here and do nothing okay 1979 you have players that fought hard in zone 5. we have players who purchased bundles anticipating war that's their own decision by the way and were let down two kvks in a row that's not not daybreak's fault yeah that's not your problem love it's also not your problem either in our situation maybe you will happily farm in home kingdom but we would rather go play farmville if that's the case on top of that we will gain close to nothing as camp contribution is likely to be considered when negotiating rewards listen if you weren't gonna fight in king's land just say so bro like that's kind of a self-report we weren't given a chance to do anything really also this midpoint you mentioned i don't see anyone except rk trying to reach it that's one of the r5s from our kingdom by the way shout out to rk all you are worried about is being locked and losing circles when we specifically said we can push them back together and offered you one of our circles so it sounds like a fair proposal on paper but it's not because they're going to be locked in their zone when king's land is already happening so okay moving on we are doing and going to do anything in our power to accommodate for and satisfy our players fair enough there is no point in any of our players playing this game if every time situations like this arise leadership says oh well maybe next time got it it seems most of you have a problem with us being open and raising discussion we are not in any way being demanding but merely put oh not being demanding it literally says right here this is not a proposal but a decision <laughs> that sounds like a demand to me but okay we're not in any way being demanding but merely putting out suggestions that we hoped that our allies could understand that maybe out of our suggestions more ideas could form and we could find that midpoint but no suggestions are criticized no direct answers given then left to expire if this is the case there is no point in us being here call it what you want but we are going to spice things up uh, that's oh let me help you that's called betrayal in case you were just wondering yeah that's called a, that's called a betrayal win or lose i hope everyone has fun because i know we will goodbye okay rk says make it clear love 
are you going to betray us then rk takes it to dms and says shall i consider this a betrayal love and they said like i said call it what you want we tried what we can and had everyone turn their backs on us i already showed you guys the screenshots where we said look we're gonna set up a 1v1 with you and earth rk has a friend there maybe we can make that happen so we did try right and remember these are the allies that they agreed to from the very beginning as well rk responds nobody turned their backs on anybody we tried to accommodate everyone the best we could this is just excuses at this point i wouldn't have made the effort to try and make everything work out if that was turning my back anyways make it clear are we fighting love said except you that's true she did say that but rk says look if me isn't enough then i don't know what else to say me equals greenwood like we're the a seed in greenwood and like we're gonna work together here and love says you know this is really hard for me as the spokesperson it's not a decision that i make on my own yet i have to admit, take the hit for it just trying to make rk feel bad for this look it, that's what happens when you're a leader of a kingdom okay you don't like that don't be a leader of the kingdom that's why i'm not an r4 in my kingdom i'll be real with you it's a lot of work being a leader of a kingdom okay sometimes you got to make those tough decisions so daybreak agreed to be allies with us and with wind and everyone knew that the a seed from fire was not really going to be doing anything this kvk earth camp already told daybreak that and i'm sure that they figured that out all on their own so the lack of fighting that daybreak has experienced up until now was 100 predicted we knew that that would be the case they knew that that would be the case they agreed to the allies anyway and now they're conveniently upset and ready to betray us after we've already fought an imperium kingdom in an entire zone and they think it's fair because they want to have a friendly 2v2 in king's land later with wind locked in a corner and look you might be thinking hey omniarch at least they told you that they were going to betray you they're kind of taking the nice guy approach right they could have just snapped and started attacking they, they could have done that but the end result is still the same they might try to be acting like the good guy but all of their proposals made kvk harder for us and completely screws over wind camp and then is completely dismissive of our suggestion that they 1v1 earth instead just so that way ultimately they could betray us and well if they're betraying us then that means they're allied with earth camp which they claim smear them in the community and that they think is disgusting the same earth camp that has already talked shit about their existing allies saying that they don't deserve rewards i don't know about you guys but betraying your allies just because you're bored and you don't don't want to just accept the next kvk when it pops like that's crazy and again i understand that people are bored okay i i get it and i know that if you go too long without fighting people migrate or they quit the game i i totally get that okay but the choices were be patient and win kvk and then sign up again for the next one or betray all of your allies and have it be public in the community that 2102 is completely fine with betraying their allies for something as small as eh we're kind of bored that's crazy that is crazy to me look I'm not in leadership for my kingdom so I can't speak from experience but I would be willing to bet that having your kingdom be known for betraying over something so pointless and meaningless and whimsical isn't that going to make it really hard to make allies later down the line like who's going to want to be allies with 2102 now doesn't this jeopardize all of their kvks after this because people are going to know that they're traitors and if that's the case don't people migrate anyway don't people stop playing anyway like look if it were me i would just take the w and sign up for the next one but they've chosen violence they've chosen betrayal they've chosen being traitors and i've shown like a million screenshots in this video to prove it but probably the most confusing part for me is that they could have just chose different allies at the very beginning they could have just been allied with water and with earth from the very start because they knew from day one that they weren't going to get a fight out of fire so everything after that just feels like an excuse again i just thought this whole thing was so ridiculous i never really cover drama or anything like that on the channel but this level of silly goose behavior i, I just i couldn't ignore it okay especially when i have all the receipts like is is it's crazy okay it's crazy i would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below let me know what you think about all of this what would you have done if you were in daybreak's position i'm i'm very curious okay while you're down there click the thumbs up button it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace